Hello everyone, welcome and thank you for joining us for another installment of In Conversation With. Today I'm very excited because we get to talk to Karen Lee from Tosses On Demand. She works in our cloud division um, and I'm just so excited to speak to her. I'm glad that she's taken the time out, you know, to have a conversation with us and just let us know what's happening in her life and a little bit more about her journey. Hello, Karen. Welcome and thank you so much for taking time with us. How are you today? Good, thanks. And you, Rosita? Good to be here. <laughs> thank you very much. I know it's hectic on your side, so thank you very much for making this time to chat with us. We really appreciate it. That Usually when I start these, I have a little something something with me to drink um, because we all need that <laughs> to revive our energy from time to time during the day. What's in my cup is juice for now because it's a little bit hot today. What's in yours? <laughs> what is in mine? So I don't know if this is quite a new concept, um, I think, to South Africa. So I can't actually like, fill, like tilt my cup, but mm -hmm. in here is this green stuff called matcha matcha mm. tea um, and mm. matcha tea um, is really crushed up um, green tea leaves and into powder form um, and it's quite um, popular in Japan um, matcha is just everywhere matcha 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 so um, yeah, you have to have you have to actually have the taste bud um, for matcha so I know a little bit about you but I definitely want to know a little bit more can you tell us a little bit more about your journey and how you got to be where you are today? Well, yeah, so th thank you, Rosita. So my TASA's journey started three years ago where I was appointed as the new financial ma manager for TASA's On Demand. I was a little bit, um, how can I say, overwhelmed at that point in time because I had little financial practical experience. Um, and it really felt like me driving in peak time traffic with merely a learner's license under my belt. Um, but you know, I really took the opportunity um, and embraced it um, with everything that I had. Um, and yeah, my, um, my journey um, at that point and my biggest challenge at that point was really focusing on the internal and control the internal control environment um, and getting the financial framework up to speed. So, yes, yeah, so um, at that point in time, it was just merely my financial accountant and I that comprised the tasks on de demand finance team. Um, it was a little bit overwhelming, but at that point in time, um, we really had the base camp of Mount Everest um, to climb um, in a very short space of time. Um, and with a lot of dedication, long hours, perseverance, humility, um, and teamwork, we achieved um, what we set out to do. Um, and then, yeah, three years later and another four um, additional team members, I, I'll, I, I have looked back and have been amazed and in awe of what we've achieved. Um, and I've got all my four team members um, standing besides me at the base camp of Mount Everest, um, looking upwards. Um, to the to summit Mount Everest. So yeah, it's been an amazing um, journey thus far. Journeys all have their highs and lows. What has been your your what has been the toughest part of your journey thus far, and how has that experience influenced the way in which you support and lend support to women in the workplace? Being one of um, three at uh, three um, female um, executives in passes on demand my journey proved to be extra tough because not only was I trying to have a work-life balance um, and also earn my stripes as a financial manager, but I was also very cognizant of the fact that I also had to be a role model or try to be a role model um, for the other female um, colleagues within the Tasks On Demand team. So, you know, these tough moments really took a lot of perseverance and um, teamwork and support. And I really just want to quote um, Sir Edmund Hillary. Um, he once said, I, it is not the mountain we conquer, but ourselves. Um, and it's really these tough moments that drew me into the woman that I am today. And I'm actually in a position now where I can actually support other female colleagues within tasks on, on demand, sort of reaching their own summit. So um, yes. Um, who within tasks do you look up to? whether female or male? So, um, right from the beginning of my Tasks On Demand journey, 
I've always looked up to Anton Herbst. Um, I think for me, his humble nature, his, his genuine compassion for people, his humility, his unwavering ethical stance, um, and his intellect has really made him a very well-respected and intriguing leader um, within Tarsus and Tarsus On Demand. Um, and I think for me, he is one, one Tarsus um, leader that really embraces and lives um, by the maxims to the fullest. Tell us about the, the best day on the job for you. What does that look like? So I think the best day on the job for me would really entail um, teamwork. Um, teamwork in the sense of effortless collaboration between um, the different facets of the business all coming together to try and solve a problem. Um, for me, that really gives me goosebumps. Um, you know, like real goosebumps. And um, the best thing about those days is where you actually see the fruits of that collaboration coming to life in terms of um, effective um, solutions um, for the company, um, as well as a highly motivated and driven team. So um, it's all about the teamwork and the collaboration that really makes my days. And now that we know what the best day looks like, what does the worst day look like for you? <laughs> So I don't know whether you can see it, but this is this would be one of the worst days where it actually is a month end at the moment. <laughs> I'm not now, but like uh, before this, this this made my day. But um, yeah, so for me, the, some of the worst days for me um, is where there's just time like tight deadlines. Um, where the team is literally working at full steam and you don't really get to see the end of the tunnel. But it's at these points in time where uh, myself as a leader actually needs to um, comfort the team, tell them that they're appreciated and that we're nearly at the end of the line and support them um, and to show that empathy um, towards the team. What, according to you, are the characteristics of a successful and strong female within Tarsus and just the industry in general? Okay, so I think for me, um, within within the technology technology industry, um, it is a male dominated one. Um, however, you know, female leaders such as Lillian Barnard, who is the Microsoft South Africa CEO, um, really is a true inspiration to what a success, successful leader as well as a, a female um, should aspire to be within this industry. So to answer your question, Rosita, just in terms of what should, what I foresee or what I see a successful female um, to be within the industry is one that does not um, lead with fear, does not lead with arrogance, um, but really um, embraces and lives out five um, characteristics. So the first characteristic for me um, as a woman leader is to lead with empathy. So really to value the relationships with your team, to actually sh truly show that you care for them. So number one is empathy. Number two is listening. So to actually listen to your team, um, to have their lending ear and to understand their viewpoint and not to make a decision straight away. So it's the listening. The third thing is nurturing. So to actually be nurturing, I mean, I think as females, we are inherently um, nurturing, you know, as mothers, as daughters, um, and um, the nurturing factor within um, an organization really comes in terms of making sure that you nurture your team, you upskill them, you develop them, and show that you truly care um, as well. That's the, the nurturing. The, the fourth one is really to um, lead with EQ. So emotional intelligence. I think for me, um, emotional intelligence overrides IQ. Um, emotional intelligence for me is really putting yourself in the other person's shoes and really trying to brush off um, things that don't really matter in life. Um, you know, if you miss a deadline, so what? You're living, you're breathing, so what? You've missed a deadline. Um, just brush it off. And I think the, the fifth um, and final um, attribute for me um, is really to live and work with passion to be that passionate explorer and challenge that status quo. And I think for me as females, we're in a position right now to challenge the status quo, um, to ask the necessary questions and not to be um, fearful.
now that we've spoken about the characteristics as a female leader how are you supported in your role in order to enable you to grow so i think for me as a female leader with ventosas on demand um we actually very fortunate to be in an environment where we get supported um right from the top um and you know not only supported in the sense of um you know the skills you know through linkedin learning uh you know um that is sort of um available to um everyone with the, within the organization but i think for me um more as a female leader um is to be supported in the sense of that work life balance and i know work life balance is overused but really i've been supported um you know throughout these three years i've been here um just in terms of um you know facing um how can i say you know the, my fertility journey um and um you know trying to be a mother um and you know trying to have um you know a, a, a miracle baby and i think for me the support that has come from um the top has just been absolutely fantastic so it's really about the support in the terms of actually understanding what a female um goes through um so for me yes it's it's a, it's a very emotional part of me and i think um yeah the support from tarsus has been amazing um it's just also being able to um say <clears throat> i have to actually go to the clinic for xyz um and without even like hesitation you just go um and know that the work will be done no matter what it will be done or you just delegate it i'm um, handed over to um your um, team member who is able to do it um yeah so it's really just that support and i think that for me not in terms of like the skill the skill set and that but for me it's more about how can i say it the support from a female perspective yep that's definitely something special i mean i mean i i i, I don't think a lot of attention or a lot of um, light is is given to working female leaders who are you know trying to conceive and trying to be moms i think we're focusing more on balancing our lives as a mom myself and the focus has been more on balancing and we haven't really given thought so thank you so much for sharing that that was great so a lot of companies are you know trying to wrap their heads around or in this journey about how do they support what policies do they need to put into place because everything you want to new from office life is is not different how do you feel about the new working from home policy policy since we are working from home and how has tarsus um you know enabled you and supported you in order for you to to to, to grow and adapt um as you work from home so i think from um from my perspective the working from home policy is really here to stay um for a long time to come um for me the work from home policy has its advantages and disadvantages um but for me the advantages outweigh the disadvantages and i think specifically um for females um in the working environment um you know you could literally um have that or try to have um that work life balance that we all try to aspire to um have um you know to have some time with your family to sneak out a little 10 minute yoga session or a 10 minute um, power nap um just to get your energies go- going so i think for me um as a female the work from home policy really um really will support us um as working um women um and um yeah just in terms of answering um your second question um tasks and specifically tasks on demand um was that like one of the first tasks companies um to actually get to the their 80 um team members to be to work remotely um within i think it was within like one one week or so um and it had it, it has been an amazing journey um you know just in terms of tasks um the tasks group um you know they have supported it supported us um right from the start um in terms of allowing us to um claim connectivity um just to help with the costs um just in terms of allowing us to take our chairs home because i mean i'm sure you're also <laughs> um my back was very um painful from my normal um lounge chair um mm-hmm. but also you know like in terms of tasks allowing us to take 
um, chairs home um, just so that we can sit upright, that we have a very comfortable working space. Um, and for me, um, and most importantly, I think TASAS has also, um, and like I say it, um, made sure and that they were aware that the social interaction still had to happen. Um, so from that perspective, they have supported um, the team culture and making sure that people still feel like they can touch you and feel you and still know you as Rosita. Because I think we miss that. And I think from Tasses on Demand, you know, we have our Uber Eats lunch sessions where all 80 of us are on Zoom and we all, um, you know, got some lunch with our um, Uber vouchers. Um, so I think, um, yeah, and no, I think TASAS has been absolutely amazing in supporting this work from home policy. And I think um, it's, a tr it's truly inspirational um, 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 company. We're going to wrap up now. So I just want to say thank you so much um, for sharing your journey, for sharing your heart and your truth. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you, Karen. Um, you know, I think you're a fantastic person and I'm glad we actually got you here today to speak to us. I've learned so much about you.